So, hi everyone. Hello. Um, yeah, like Dimi is here from uh, MS Labs and uh, he was visiting for nearly one week. Uh, we did a lot of stuff together. We went to the Nürburgring. He did his first lap with Danny. Mm -hmm. um, but this was not the idea to come over because uh, we were starting to work on a few new projects and, and um, let's say uh, ECU ideas and fix some problems on other items and uh, yeah it's like always a pleasure you to have you here because you uh, it's 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 nothing like standard that somebody comes up and is always try to make the work as good and as perfect as he can um, and yeah I really have to say thank you from my side for this no problem um, always a pleasure yeah thank you and uh, yeah, like we, yeah, you can just, you can start up what we what we did the last days. Um, yeah, we'll just like uh, catch up the themes. So we were thinking about, you know, it's like tuned cars always get more and more like OEM plus cars, which means a car backdated from 1989 or 1990 has to run like a car like from the 2000s. Let's say like this, yes. not like 2023, but like from the 2000s. So you turn on the key, car starts up, car accelerates in cold. Uh, when you come back to idle, idle is at 850. So all these like critical points when it comes to tuning cars, uh, you have to have somebody in the back with a lot of knowledge to get this stuff going. And Jürgen, so one of the race driver, was like talking to Demi and he was like, hey, do you want to join us on a race day? And he was like, yeah, I would, would like to see you. And then we like, decide this in like about yeah. three weeks yeah and uh, I was like okay uh, I would like to be in one of the races yes. to, to have the experience on yeah. the Nürburgring and if at the same time we can get some work done here because not all projects can be done remotely yes okay or maybe they can be done but it takes a lot of time and uh, you don't always have a lot of time to do it's, that. It's funny, you know, we had a hesitation problem on the yeah. OBD ECU. And I think at least I was like working for 20 hours on this ECU and was searching for problems. And you were remotely working for 10 hours or something. Yes. And it was like 20 minutes. Yeah. Here. And on 20 minutes on the street, we found yes. the problem solved. And, and a lot of anxiety <laughs> was, yeah. uh, was relieved. Yeah, so and uh, then we from this point we like we uh, were discussing about uh, uh, projects which we have in the shop and uh, how we can solve this and this and this and uh, how we can get this going and how we can let's say make the BMW shift or let's con let's communicate uh, ABS from a BMW with a ECU from you. Yeah, um, we got we got Jurgen's car to read the speed sensors from the M the M3 ABS, so we now have front and rear uh, wheel speeds and we can compare uh, for example if we have good traction or not and we can also do uh, boost by boost by gear and boost by a VSS and it helps a lot on the, in the data logs. For sure you have to tell the people what is VSS, it's like a vehicle speed sensor yes. so it's like... VS, VSS is the vehicle speed yeah. so you have the um, on, on a rear wheel drive you have the driven wheels which are the rear and you have the front. So if you on a data log you see the rear wheels accelerating smooth, smoothly, you, you don't uh, have a problem, you have good traction. But if you see them suddenly increasing and having like small spikes while the front wheels are steady, you know you have traction issues and you need either to re reduce your boost or close your uh, throttle more. And on Jürgen's car, we have drive-by wire, so we can do it, it's not a problem. But um, at the same time, it's just uh, a little bit better to just reduce the boost. Because even with 40% uh, of throttle, you can still have traction issues on a, on a boosted car. So we just drop down the boost and it's running fine. Uh, the, the interesting stuff on Jürgen's car now are the downshifts. Yes. Which we have done the auto bleep. And so when you push the lever forward and it downshifts, it automatically revs up to the correct target and it's perfect. We also did that on the NCs with a manual transmission. Yes. Which was also very interesting. And we developed it just in time so we get Danny's car on the, on on the, the Nürburgring. 
and that was also very interesting. Yeah, so, a yes. lot of cool projects. So the, the interesting part is when uh, what uh, is like actually for you out there interesting, so it's not Danny's and Jürgen's car, so if you have or if you would convert your NA or NB to a drive for wire module where we have the, the parts to do this conversion, um, you actually can run with a stick shift driven car rev match which means downshifting and the car will do like a little auto blip. So you have more stable control and this is like also like all this resto mod game yeah. which we are playing now. So this like comes also into it. You know, you just have and everybody who is or he who is driving a drive wire ECU or not, not, not a drive wire ECU, like a, everybody who is driving a drive wire throttle body actually can imagine how it, it runs way better than a, than a cable driven. One thing, and on the other side, we saw it already the second time now on a race that the original throttle body destroys itself. You know, it's like pretty common that the shaft is blowing yes. away on the NBs. So I have it now the second time on a race car, and also the cable which comes melts. It yes. melts from the heat of the turbo. Yes, so, and starts uh, sticking open. Yes. So this is like something I would say um, is pretty good. Uh, that we can convert now cars to drive for wire and get these things done and you have a lot of benefits. So yeah, this was like some of the projects. It's, it sounds like it was really fast, but just to make a Cambus working nicely, it takes an amount of time. Um, yeah, we, will, we were discussing at the moment regarding the ND ECU. This is like, uh, I was uh, asked about from guys in the States how uh, far are we in development? We actually about 25%. This is because we have the signals, we have the combos, which is for other ECU developers like 50%. But I would say because regarding the thing of the direct injection, um, there's like a lot, lot, lot of work to do it. And we are not sure if we can run um, normal port injection with the high compression. Yes, that's an issue because Mazda says that they were able to run 14 to 1 compression because of the direct injection and now it remains to be seen if this is true or they were not able to get the performance they needed meeting their, their emissions criteria yeah. without running direct injection because maybe and this is something that will be fun, that we will find out soon maybe you can run 14 to 1 compression with of course with premium gasoline yes, yes not 95 or something like that, 95 uh, European or 91 US. Is uh, 91 US pretty the same like 98 here? Yes, I, yes, and it's, I think 93 US is like 90, 90, 98 or 100. Okay. But it, that depends. And so that remains to be seen. I have a slight suspicion that the direct injection is needed so you, you can have both the performance and the emissions. Because on other cars that we, have direct, uh, that we have converted from direct injection to port injection, we lost no power. And we were able to run huge amounts of boost, <coughs> like uh, four, four bars of boost, 60 PSI for, yeah. for US guys. So, um, yeah, like the, 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 the most, thing or we were discussing now the last hour about new projects which is now coming up so um, yeah we're looking like uh, because on the OBD ECUs the idle is or the idle control is way faster than the yeah. one which is on the MS so we are thinking about doing something like this for the NA and B and NBFL and the next step or in, the, in this step when we're coming up with this ECU line we want to make it working with the um, with the Lambda sensor uh, which is directly on the board and controlled by the ECU. So in this case, we can actually get the, you just plug in your Lambda sensor to the ECU and you don't have to do any wiring and everything is controlled by the ECU, which is special for the heat strategy. I think this is something you can yes. catch up, pretty interesting. And uh, yes, Dima will explain the, why we want to have it. The, the important thing is that the Lambda sensor should not be heated up if the engine is not running. So on the, if you have, uh, for example, an IM gauge, the moment you switch the ignition on, it starts to, to heat itself up. And if the car is cold, uh, condensation will form very quickly inside the exhaust when you start the engine. 
the, and the condensation starts hitting the already warmed up sensor because it starts warming up itself as soon as you switch the ignition on and condensation can get inside the sensor find itself on the on the heater and it cracks the ceramic element inside and this is a, a pretty common failure if you wait for example you switch on you wait for five ten seconds because maybe you're searching for something inside the car and then you start it, it's not something that happens on you know on the on the first start of the of the of the key but it's something that you that can happen within three to six months of use so if someone has a failure on within six months or something like that it's usually from that and the point of having the um, the, uh, the wideband controller inside the ECU is so that you can control it so for example you switch on nothing happens you start the ECU waits four or five seconds and then starts ramping up the heater slowly in uh, accordance to the data sheet provided by the manufacturer of the, um, of the sensor which is Bosch so they provide all the details and they, they, they actually tell you you, don't, you must not warm it up if the engine is not running and when, it, when the engine is running there is a specific uh, speed for which you have to follow and uh, warm it up that's it so yeah like this is the point where you say okay this is something I would like to have and on the other side is like little side projects we're working on a proper post loop boost control setting so this is like there is something in the ECU which is not that bad but um, like DME you're also using a lot of open loop boost yes, control right. um, we do always all, always run open loop boost control but special on the race cars and sometimes or even uh, the more you use closed loop things you always can control it it's always like a giving a, a signal and returning it back say this is okay giving those we are always back or just like it always goes front and backwards like a like a circle so like this is like closed loop but um in the end of the day it's like on idle it's then it, it will run the accurate so this is like the point we are just uh is thinking about to go into this uh, yes. and and make it more working or better working so um, on the last thing we were discussing is uh, for a Fiat 124 we want to make an ECU. For the Abarth, yes, yes. yes. Um, so this is like Thomas car we can convert, um, and probably the there is another uh, Fiat driver out there who says okay this is interesting, special in the states. For this ECU is not made for emissions control and all this stuff. Oh, correct. So that's for sure not. It's like more purpose racetrack ECU. You can control nicely your engine. It, it may be possible to do it at the same time. Yeah. But it's not our priority. Yes. So. So it's not it's not out, uh, out of the discussion. It may it it may end up being an, an emissions compatible ECU, but it's just not our priority because we'll develop it for the race car first. Yeah. So we will see how, how it will go. Um, yeah, and the next thing, like Demi is interesting, like you, you explain me so much stuff, what is happening in Crete, because they are like really crazy cars over there, yeah, like for sure. <laughs> a lot of 1,000 horsepower plus cars, and they do a lot of track racing. So next time, I think before Demi comes back the next time to us, I will go to Greece and uh, visit him there. It's, it's, and uh, experience some of the madness <laughs> <laughs> yeah to see uh, what is happening there and uh, yeah like it's like uh, it's a nice country to uh, do it for a holiday so uh, before we combine something Perfect. so yeah I really have to say thank you from my side and I really know that this is not a standard way uh, and I really like this business relationship we're now working since together since uh, 17 yeah I think yeah and uh, yeah business we I think three years ago or four years ago I we decided just to go one way just with Demi because we like the support is like the best support I can get ever in the world I can tell you right away so there's no ECU guy from my eyes which we ever had this kind of support I have a problem it will be solved and you're gonna explain it yesterday the right way like there are 100,000 people running around which are making problems and there's like one guy in this 100,000 which is trying to solve problems mm -hmm. and this one guy is like in the ECU world for me Demi because I ask him something and I have this and this in ECU and he's not like okay uh, messaging him back not four days will solve the problem on the other side by itself he's like okay we have this ECU let's look into it let's look into the problem uh, what could be the failure 
and uh, we're working through it and uh, it's like always in our business working hours are way expanded yeah for sure and <laughs> um, yeah he's like helping always and this is like a pleasure for me that we are like such in a, in a, in a good friendship and working hand in hand together on projects and it's really cool for me because when I have a problem it's like okay let's solve it just make do it this and this way so thank, thank you, you. Thank for you. having you here and I hope you enjoyed it um, it's funny always when he's here we are always in the time schedule this yeah. is like a this yeah. is like an interesting this is crazy part. this is crazy yeah, yeah. Uh, even on Friday it was crazy busy because we had a lot of deliveries but we we were full on time schedule on on Tuesday or on Thursday because uh, everything went faster than ex that 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 we thought on Wednesday we were we were on time on Wednesday yeah on Thursday on uh, in and even on Saturday with a little uh, wiring mishap on uh, Danny's car yes so and even with that we got the um, rev, we, we got the rev matching working on the manual uh, transmission yes. car but I told you it's easy <laughs> <laughs> So the, the, this is an inside joke because <laughs> Jan, Jan's always uh, like, uh, yeah, but this is easy. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, I cannot thank you enough, and yeah, we'll see you next time in Creek. Bye. Bye bye.